So here's a very special video to talk about the upcoming game from Creative Assembly, Total War Three Kingdoms. Now I've never covered video games on this channel before since I'm more of a film fanatic and a casual gamer at best. Because reviewing and researching historical films is my full-time job, usually the only games I tend to play are the ones I already own, and many of them happen to be from the Total War franchise. I've been playing them since the very first Shogun, and it's my favorite strategy series. So when Creative Assembly invited me to come down to their office and play the Three Kingdoms demo before the general public does, you're damn right I'm gonna jump at the opportunity. And since many of you have been asking me for years to do a Total War game, I figured what better time than now. So enough of my rambling, let's get into it. For those of you who don't know, Three Kingdoms is set in ancient China in 190 AD. This is when the Han Dynasty was about to fall and the Empire would split, ushering in a hundred years of civil war. And much like the title suggests, it's heavily inspired by a historical book about the period called Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is generally considered to be one of the most important novels in Chinese literature. But because it was written over a thousand years later in the 14th century, there are huge chunks of the book which were heavily romanticized and it almost reads like mythology. Uh, for example, you could compare it with Homer's Iliad about the Trojan War. We know the city of Troy did in fact exist, but if there was an Achilles, he probably wasn't a demigod. The same thing goes with the Icelandic sagas of the famous Viking Ragnar Lothbrok, who probably existed, but I doubt that he killed a giant snake to rescue a princess. In any case, this blend of history and mythology will be incorporated into the game. There'll be two modes. One is the classic grand campaign, where you just focus on building your armies and economy to conquer the entire map. The second mode is called Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which will have all those fantastical elements from the book and has more of a story. And your generals are all based on real historical figures. You have Cao Cao, who was like the Chinese equivalent of Julius Caesar. You have Sun Ren, a noble lady who was also a great warrior, and her brother Sun Chuan, the founder of the state of Eastern Wu, and a great military commander in his own right. They all existed at the time, but the Romance of the Three Kingdoms mode, they possess what I can only describe as superpowers that you can inflict on the enemy. For example, Sun Ren is able to shoot an arrow that is strong enough to take down a few ranks of men. This style of gameplay was first introduced in Total War Warhammer and has now made its way into their historical games. And the impression I got from Creative Assembly as to why they included it is because these features are within the spirit of the book. The idea being that the common foot soldiers would hear secondhand stories about the skills of their generals and would heavily embellish on the details when telling it to others. Almost to the point where these guys would unrealistically be able to cut down a whole platoon by themselves. So anyway, in the game, generals can also challenge each other in single combat, which is pretty cool. And during these duels, none of their men get involved. However, just because you kill their general, don't expect the enemy army just to automatically throw down their weapons and swear allegiance to you, even though that would be pretty sweet on occasion. From what I can tell, the battles play out the same way as almost every other Total War game, which is perfectly fine with me because I hate learning new controls in an already established franchise. However, I was caught a little bit off guard with the archers. What's different this time is that archers are now a mix between bowmen and infantry, and unless you click on a certain button, they don't automatically start shooting when the enemy comes into range, which is why I got the crap kicked out of me here. I mean, honestly, this is why I'm not a gamer, because who wants to watch me on a Let's Play when I completely suck at playing video games? So in any case, you'll have to get used to a few new changes, but if you're a Total War fan, then this shouldn't be a problem. Another new feature I was told by Creative Assembly is that the campaign map now has a day and night cycle, which is okay with me. I wasn't able to see much of the map though, just the flyover you're seeing right now, so I don't know how large the map of China will be. I don't know if I have the Silk Road, if I have deserts or jungles, but I certainly hope so. It would also be kind of cool if we get to send trade envoys to the Roman Empire, but Creative Assembly wouldn't confirm this with me. The biggest change they're excited to tell me about, but weren't ready to show me, is that you'll be able to use spies for the first time, and in a very complex way. And the cool thing is, you can recruit spies from an enemy faction, and the further up the ranks they climb, the more information you'll be able to gain on your enemy or ally, and they can also do the same thing to you. So there might be a circumstance where one of your best generals could in fact be a spy, and unless you find out, you would never realize it. Now, I'm not exactly sure how you'll be able to discover enemy spies in your faction. Like, will you need to have enough information before you accuse someone, or can you just point random fingers at people and have them executed on the spot, allowing you to rule your country through fear in an almost communist way? A bit sadistic, I know, but it would be cool if they included it. 
The one thing I do know is that when you discover a spy in your ranks, you can recruit them to become a double agent and feed back false information to your enemy, which is such an awesome idea, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Well, that's about everything I know about this game from the short time I was able to play it. I hope you found this video interesting, and I'd like to say thanks to Creative Assembly for inviting me down to their office. Now, as to whether I'll do another video on this game or something else in the future, maybe I'm not planning to anytime soon since reviewing historical movies is the focus of my channel. But let me know how I did in this video and have a think about it. Anyway, thanks for watching History Buffs, and I'll see you again next time.